Hey, what's going on guys? Today we were talking about the Spyderco Balance, a uh, new knife review for you. This is the uh, limited edition uh, Extreme Mini Balance. And I have to zoom in here because it's, it's extremely, extremely small. Here's it next to a uh, Bic lighter. So let me actually zoom out a little bit. It is a tiny little thing. And um, I'm actually kidding. This is a, an oversized lighter. It's bigger than you think. Uh, this is just the, the regular balance. I just thought I'd screw with you a little bit in this video. Um, anyway, <laughs> feeling goofy today for some reason. So, Alright, so this is going to be a review on the Spyderco Balance. Uh, there's no such thing as the Extreme Mini Balance, okay? So just forget that. Um, it's a very cool knife. It is a very unique knife, obviously, as you can see. Um, it almost looks like the blade was used to stab something and just kind of squished. It's kind of goofy. But extremely functional and extremely collectible. So first off, let me give you the specifications on this knife. Um, the blade here is VG10 stainless steel, very commonly used uh, throughout Spyderco models. It is 1 and 15 16 inches long. The full blade, the cutting edge is 1 and a quarter inches. Uh, very unique, they put an oversized uh, Ricasso here for the uh, finger choil. So you can get a really good grip on it or purchase. And it actually takes up a little bit, excuse me, a little bit less than half of the blade itself. So although being a small knife to begin with, you have even a smaller functional cutting edge. Although I have to tell you, you know, one and a quarter inches still gets most of the jobs you need done perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about being too small for most tasks. Uh, I found that all the common stuff that I use a knife for day in and day out, I was able to do everything I needed to with this knife. But there are still some drawbacks, which I'll get to later in the review. But anyway, moving on with the specifications here. The full length of the knife open is 4 and 7 16 inches long, and of course closed. And by the way, it is a liner lock. Uh, the closed length is 2 and 5 8 inches long. Uh, it's a very light knife, 1.3 ounces. I mean, it has the carbon fiber handle scales and full uh, stainless liners, but it's just a small knife, so it's not going to weigh a whole lot. 1.3 ounces for anyone who's interested in that. Um, I found that, well first off, I carried this with the clip for a couple days and I had some issues which I'll talk about in a second but um, I ended up taking the pocket clip off and carrying it in the pocket and it really just melts in your pocket. It disappears. You don't feel it's in there. It's very lightweight and very small and without the clip it's pretty pretty slim line as well. But anyway, it's called the balance because the Obviously just the symmetrical type design here. The opening hole is smack dab in the middle of the knife and it's kind of balanced on both sides. So hence the name. This knife was designed by Ed Shemp. Ed Shemp has done a lot of different work with Spyderco before. He does a lot of kind of Eastern Asian type designs. He uh, created the Spyderco Kukri as well as the Spyderco Barong. I did do a review on the Barong, although I've never owned the Kukri. But uh, kind of a similar design in that kind of extreme offset blade. Here's your, your handle angle, and then of course the blade just cants in. What I really like about that is that it allows you to get in there with your hand being straight on a straight plane. allows you to get that tip in, you know, to zip open uh, boxes and all kinds of stuff. It's actually a very, very effective design. Um, some things I don't like about the knife is, first off, overall... It, there's no sharp corners, but everything's kind of an abrupt angle, so it's a little bit uncomfortable. The actual design of the knife is very comfortable in the hand, but I'm saying the, uh, you see here, just kind of this abrupt, like they could have softened some of the stuff up a little bit. I found it to be just a little bit uncomfortable. Um, nothing ridiculous or anything like that, but I think this knife is more suited for collectors. Although the design is nice, I think if they made this knife very slightly larger, made it an FRN so it's cheaper to produce, made it more affordable. If it was around the 50 or $60 range, like I said, and a tiny bit bigger, it'd be perfect for me. I love the design. There's just little little tweaks I'd make here and there. It's not a cheap knife. Uh, overall price is $199.95 is the uh, retail price on it. Uh, so if you bought it direct, it'd be 200 bucks. but most people don't do that. I'm going to say it's around the $150 range. really depends on where you're shopping, but it's not a cheap knife at all. And that's the one complaint a lot of people have. Not only is it expensive, but it's it's small. It's hard to buy a very small knife for that kind of money when you know there's all this other stuff out in the market. But if you're one of those Spyderco collectors that likes the carbon fiber, and I know a couple people have just almost every carbon fiber model there is, 
obviously it's something you want to add to your collection. It's still a very cool collectible. What I like about this is it is going with the whole collectible theme. They have a presentation hardware set up here. And what I mean by that is that the Torx screws, the heads are on the reverse of the knife. Okay, you can break this knife down completely for cleaning or anything like that. But they actually have it reversed so that the, the front side is a presentation look. You have that nice, the back ends of the screws. That when I got my Chris Reeves Sebenza, that's the first thing I did was I swapped the hardware so it has that kind of nice presentation look. By the way, this, in, this entire knife is very smooth. There is not a single jimp. <laughs> I guess that's the singular version of jimping. Uh, there's not a single jimp on the entire knife. Uh, I don't mind that, except one thing I did find is that in the liner lock, I'm so used to texturing and jimping on the liner that I found this was just, it wasn't hard. I'm not going to say difficult. It's not difficult to, to unlock, but it is less comfortable, I can say. Okay, so I found that opening and closing this, or not necessarily opening, but in closing this and releasing the liner lock, I found it to be a little bit less comfortable. Not a huge deal, but of course, I also think that on the back here, it'd be more comfortable if they put a thumb ramp in it. But if they cut a thumb ramp into there, it would no longer be balanced. So obviously that would be an issue. But uh, overall, I didn't find it to be a problem with the nice, uh, you know, lines here and the design, as well as this big finger choil. It never slipped out of my hand. It never came loose. It is still very comfortable to use. I found it to be a very good performing knife, in other words. Um, the only real issues, like I said, were the fact that this liner lock has no, uh, no real texturing at all. That was a little bit uncomfortable. And just, you know, generally speaking, they could have rounded or melted the ends just a little bit on this but otherwise like I said I would definitely put this in the collectible category more so than a user knife um, but anyway it's still a very cool knife it's just expensive it's not going to be everyone's bag it's kind of funky looking some people aren't going to like it very much uh, it does have a pocket clip that goes in all four positions you see the the holes here uh, you know left right carry tip up tip down pretty much whatever you want except for sideways um, from the factory, it comes like this. It's a tip-up right side carry, which a lot of Spyrcos come, you know, direct from the factory like. But what I did was, I mentioned before, I took the pocket clip off because when I was carrying this knife, it fell out twice. Twice that it completely fell out of my pocket because there's not a whole lot gripping into the pocket. I don't like clipping a lot of smaller knives. Uh, I love the Spyderco Cricket. However, I found that when I carried that knife as well, and some other various smaller knives like this, they tend to fall out of my pocket. I don't know if that's just me, but it's just something that happens a lot with smaller knives. So I tend to throw a lanyard on them and put them inside the pocket instead. This I never added a lanyard to. Uh, I just didn't really have time to do it. But they, they call this a a barreled lanyard hole. I believe they, they say barreled, but basically it's just a, a hollow tubing that they put in there. It kind of gives it a, a nice look as well as gives it more support so that if you're really tugging on a lanyard or something, it's not pushing or pulling on the uh, the frame of the scales but anyway it's a uh, it's very very cool little knife if you're into the carbon fiber spideys you gotta get one it's just one of those things if you're into unique funky looking knives you gotta get one um, but if you're wondering hey you know is this gonna be a safe queen or can I actually use this thing I would say you can definitely use it it's still extremely functional so just another funky little spider co and another knife review I wanted to do for you guys. I apologize for screwing around in the beginning of the video. <laughs> you can see this lighter in my hand. I got this as a gas station lighter, you know, butane, whatever. Let me bring my camera up just a little bit here. So don't ask where I got it. It's from a gas station, so I can't tell you where to where to find them or anything. But it's actually hard to even grip the thing. But it's massive. I just thought I'd screw with you a little bit. You can see it in my hands here. So anyway. That's it. That's the review. Spartaco Balance. It's very cool if you're into that kind of thing. But very expensive, so unfortunately not everyone's going to be able to get one. This is actually being traded. I like it, but there's a special girl here on YouTube who, uh, who wants it more than I do, so I'm trading for some cool stuff. And you can look forward to that video in the future. But for now, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you for watching. Take care.